This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, our flagship energy program for the whole week is right now, so stay by the tube. Eh? <laughs> I'm Jay Fidel, this is Think Tech, and the name of that program is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And it's progenitor and creator and supporter <laughs> for all these not years. Go over the top, Sharon <laughs> Moriwaki, over the top, Sharon, <laughs> co chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Hi, Sharon. Aloha. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the Big Island today. We're going to talk about what's on the horizon for Hawaii County in 2018. And guess what? Uh, we have Will Ralston there from the Big Island. What, energy coordinator? He's is that the, what you are? He's the energy coordinator. I am called the energy coordinator for the last. Seven years going almost to eight. Wow, is it yeah. that long? Oh, Will. What a great oh. job. You know, the people around the world would line up for your job. No kidding. Fabulous job. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Eight, eight on its side is infinity, so that's, <laughs> sometimes that's how it feels. Tell us how you're doing. What's going on there? Yeah, so where's, yeah. where's your office, Will? Are you located in the county is building in Hilo? Kona, isn't it Kona? Right. Kona? We're in the uh, Kona side, Lead Silver. West Hawaii Civic Center with the PV storage battery and electric vehicles. So government center that's self-sufficient when the sun shines. <laughs> 100% <laughs> renewable plus. So it's 200% renewable from like 10 to 3.30. And it's 100% renewable from 8 to 10 and then 4.30 to 5.30 now. And then, you know, when the sun goes down, obviously, we take Helco power. Uh -huh. um, so you don't have storage so, on site yet? Say that again, please. You don't have storage on site yet? So that we you do. Can go 24 we have a lithium ion battery uh, that was uh, obtained through ARA funds, American okay. Recovery Reinvestment Act. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Good. We do have. We do have a storage battery. So let's talk about the Big Island. You know, uh, here to say that the Big Island is probably ahead of every other island, every single other <laughs> island, uh, on how much, you know, what percentage of renewables uh, against the total. Am I right about that? You are almost right and ultimately <laughs> right. Um, there is an island out there, the second largest island in the United States. A good friend of mine runs Kodiak Island's electric co-op. Um, and they are 99% renewable with, you know, probably the same load as Kauai, mostly from hydro. Mm -hmm. They have some wind turbines, some flywheels. Uh, and, yeah, so my friend Darren Scott runs that co-op up in Kodiak Island, Alaska. Wow, in Alaska. Uh, I was in the Coast Guard, Will. The Coast Guard has a big air station in Kodiak. so ah. it's, it's the not, largest. Yes. Coast Guard Station, uh, correct. Yeah. And, and they're the largest load. So so it's a lot of similarities to maybe Oahu. Uh -huh. Interesting. Hmm. So what is it then <clears throat> about a Big Island that makes the Big Island such a high-density renewable you know, experience that we have? What is your percentage, by the way, of renewables as against the total amount of energy? Uh, so it's 54 if you go by the RPS standard, uh, which we all know is, it has changed. Um, but if you go by the renewable portfolio standards, we're at 54.2% in 2016, and we're running about the same 54.29% uh, as of quarter three, 2017. So what's your target? Well, with, with, with who mm -hmm. knew on board, it's, it's projected at 75%. So within two years, it should be up at 75%. Our target has always been um, to do the most. I think even before the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative was hatched in uh, 2008, we were at 38%. So we already hit the clean energy goals that were set for 2030, I believe, at 40%. So we're already there. What's the, yeah. what's the makeup um, of your renewables, Will? I mean, is it PV or hydro? I know you had hydro. Um, it's, uh, and, and so the largest geothermal. Load, mm -hmm. Well, the largest load used to be geothermal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that was 20% of the renewable generation. And I guess if I hit the PV is now at 80 plus megawatts with a 25% mm. uh, capacity factor. I, I think geothermal beats it, but, but the PV is almost 
Mm -hmm. uh, it may be the largest generator like today, but you know, but today's a rainy day, so so no no can today. <laughs> um, but uh, geothermal and PV are competing for the top spot in megawatt gigawatt hours produced per year. So how is hydro? Because when we went there, remember some I years do. back. The Wailuku River, the yeah, northeast and it went of, from the north right. of Hilo, yeah. Down, yeah. So not right. not much then there or how no, is that going? no, it does come up to about uh, I believe it, it's 12 megawatts. It's run of the river, so when the river runs rages, you, you get to tap into it. So it's it's not a firm hydro source mm -hmm. like most people are used to. It's it's an intermittent source. Uh, so it does comprise. I, I'm I'm going to guess in the uh, five percent area because it's about mm -hmm. it's 12 megawatts, but it's not used, mm. you know, flat out, full capacity base load. So I'm going to hit it with a 50 percent capacity factor, and I'll I'll look at some charts while we're talking, and I'll correct it if I'm wrong. Okay, well let's let's uh, do a kind of a, a periphery examination. So I'm just, uh, I'm traveling, um, you know, south of Hilo. Everything begins in Hilo, sorry. That's right. <laughs> uh, so south of Hilo, you, you have, of course, Pune Geo, uh, Geothermal, Geothermal Venture, um, which is, uh, what did you say it was, 38, 38 megawatts? Maybe is it more now? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's 30 and, and it's 30 or 32, and then there's a dispatchable 6 to 8 that goes up and down, load follows. So it's it's both base load and a load follow, but you can call it 38, you know, just just for our purposes. Yeah, it's, and it's often discussed in the context of uh, well, environmental controversies. I guess it's really a cultural controversy, um, and um, you know, and and we know that it Pune Geo, Geothermal Ventures could generate a lot more than 38 mm -hmm. or whatever it is, hundreds, and for hundreds of years or more. And so uh, yeah. there's a lid on it. Now, is the, is the lid a, a scientific lid or is it merely a cultural or political lid? It's actually a lot of different things. So I would start, as, as an engineer, I would start with the transmission constraint. I believe that if you, need, if you wanted to put more geothermal on, you'd have to upgrade the transmission lines, which run to Hilo Central, Central and then back to Pune. So... The, I think the transmission line is constrained at somewhere around that 38 megawatts. Maybe they can go up to 60, uh, but I think there'd be transmission upgrades even going to the 60 they're permitted to do. Hmm. So it's it's transmission constraint, and then it has all the other um, social issues that you mentioned around it. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you announced or if Puno um, Geothermal Ventures announced tomorrow. <clears throat> They were going to go to 60, and that there was going to be sufficient, um, you know, transmission lines. Would there be resistance on that? Would there be resistance on, I guess, what amounts to any incremental increase? Well, they did try such a deal with the Helco RFP, and and Helco, to their credit, was looking for a lower price for its customers, and uh, no one could meet that bar. So it was to be cost-effective geothermal that would lower the rates, and, mm -hmm. and no one could hit that bar. So the other thing to keep in mind is that that's the youngest part of the island. So you can call it zero years old. Um, and if they had put the geothermal wells where they first drilled the test wells, it would have been run over by lava by now. So it's, you know, you want to be... You want to have a diverse portfolio is what I say. You want to have geothermal. The hydro mm -hmm. is actually 16 megawatts, so I do correct myself. So it's probably 8% of, of the uh, renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to have a diverse por portfolio because we have the geothermal. We have the world-class wind on the south and north points. And now the county you know, has a third-party power purchase agreement with a great developer at La Lamila Wind Farm at our largest, deepest wells. So... You know, and then we have the photovoltaics at 80 megawatts, and then the promise of OTEC in the future at Natural Energy Lab. So we have a very mm -hmm. diverse portfolio of both firm, world-class, you know, wind that blows 60% of the time is the best in class on land. And then we have intermittent with photovoltaics and the intermittent hydro. One thing that comes out of this is a, 
if the transmission lines aren't sufficient for an increase at Pune, um, mm. would they would 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 uh, Helco have to build transmission lines to get you know beyond fifty four percent? Is that in the cards? Is that in discussion? Uh, it sounds like if you want, you know, you want to go to 100% at some point, you have to do that, uh, Pune or no Pune, no? Right. So let's, if we moved, you know, let's say we develop other places like Pipikeo, which is the Huhanua biomass, they'll need some transmission upgrades. Um, not as much, I wouldn't think as much as the magnitude of Pune geothermal, because that's such a long run from Pune to Hilo, mm. and Pipikeo is very close to Hilo, and there was already a power plant there, so I'm sure it's just some some upgrade. And then if you increase the north wind farm and south wind farms, there's certainly transmission upgrades. And th that's where you get into the, okay, what's the all-in cost to do the next project? So all of these projects require some transmission upgrades, so it's you know, instead of talking about just generation, we talk about the whole package now, generation, transmission, and distribution, and then which project makes the most yeah. cost-effective. Yeah, you didn't mention storage, though, actually, Will. What about storage yeah. in that package? Isn't that part of the package? Well, it's funny because, you know, with geothermal, obviously it's already stored in the magma, so yeah. no need. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah. Wor with world-class winds, you're operating at 60% capacity factor, very, very unlike California, which is at 30%. So you're already, like, working 60% of the time. So the need for storage goes away the higher your capacity factor. So call geothermal a 99% capacity factor, the wind at 60%, and, you know, the hydro at 50%. Now you get down to photovoltaics at 25%. Mm -hmm. Then you look at storage. Then, mm -hmm. then it makes more sense. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a storage need, but fortunately on this island, there's so many uh, uh, renewable resources in a diverse portfolio that are almost firm. Yeah. That, that the storage need isn't as great, right? Yeah. Well, when you said yeah. that uh, wind is 60% uh, uh, efficient or ca capacity, capacity. I forget, capacity, you mean that, it, that, that you're averaging it over the 24-hour period. Uh, day and night, it's still, it's still generating power. Um, so that really is tremendous. Um, in, in fact, as you say, it's, it's, it's way better than solar at 25%. So wind is uh, something absolutely. to focus on, no? Yeah, we want... Um County of Hawaii and Helco Hawaii Electric Light agree that more wind should be done on this island. You can look at our neighbor island, Maui, that has 70 megawatts of wind. We're at 30 mega, 33 megawatts of wind. We could double that, but obviously mm -hmm. the last wind farms in would have to do a different type of PPA, power purchase agreement. Mm -hmm. So that would, you know, they'd be last in the protocol. Um, and then there's a new power purchase agreement that's being talked about on the street called Renewable Dispatchable Generation. Not, not approved yet by the PUC, but a different way of, of letting intermittent projects come in and, and play on the grid. I, you know, I have so many questions about the, the Big Island, by the way, I have to tell you, you know, full disclosure, it's my favorite island. <laughs> it's got so much diversity. I love that. But uh, going back yep. to South Point for a minute, years ago, in the early phases, before 2008, there was a wind farm at South Point because it was a great location for wind. But the developer sort of abandoned it, am I right? Um, and you had all these really, you know, ugly towers there doing nothing. So what happened since then? Somebody else came in and, and did another wind farm in the same location at South Point? Yeah, I believe they were bought out. I believe that was called Apollo Wind. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was bought out by the current company, which are father and son, Steve Pace, Pace and Rich Pace. Mm -hmm. And they're called Tahiri, spelled T-A-W-H-I-R-I. Mm -hmm. and, and they replaced the turbines with some GE 1.2 megawatt uh, turbines, which I believe there's 15 of them. It, it comes up to 20 megawatts down there. Strikes me so, that the, the South Point area is like 12 miles south of the road at uh, Wahino um, is so far away from, you know, uh, any town or, or mm -hmm. main road, there's plenty of room on that big plateau there at South Point 
for more than 12, no? Oh, yeah, you could you could add quite you could add, you know, maybe I don't know how many megawatts, but certainly double the 20 that are there and you're right, it's so far down. You know, we're lucky on the Big Island cuz when our when we look at our wind farms, they look, you know, like nice miniature dolls <laughs> or miniature, you know, gingerbread houses. They don't they don't really hurt the eye, you know, when you're driving on the road, certainly if if you're living closer to them or if they're on a hill, um, you're going to notice them. But we're fortunate that we have locations that are far away from populations. Yeah, you so mentioned the, uh, you mentioned the uh, uh, I guess it's North Kohala you're talking about. I, as I recall, there was a wind farm just, just mm -hmm. next to the Coast Guard station up there, which is no more. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, that was a pretty good location, too. Is that the one you're talking about at Kohala? Well, I was just talking about the South Wind Farm that you were talking about, and, yeah. and the North Wind project is done by Javi. Yeah. It's still in Javi, yeah. uh, and it's been running for 15 years very successfully. No gearboxes have wiped out because the developer <laughs> was really Akamai about choosing the right gearboxes. Ah. And so those are the Vesta turbines. They're low profile, made in, uh, I believe, Denmark. Um, but we also have the Vestas at our Lalamilu water pumping site, which, by the way, is the most sophisticated mm. water wind system in the United States and probably the world because it does not export any energy. It pumps, uh, it cuts, it cuts in on the right wind speed and it checks the water levels in each tank, <laughs> and it, it only mm. pumps up to that water level and then cuts out. So oh, it's, it's a very sophisticated system. That is really, that's wonderful. <laughs> what a great system. You know, um, so wonderful that we're going to take a one-minute break to digest all that you've said. <laughs> right. So, Will, we're going, to, we're going to take one minute. We're going to see some public service announcements. We'll come back and talk to you some more about more renewables on the Big Island. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Okay, we're back with my co-host, Sharon Moriwaki, co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum here on Think Tech, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we're talking about the big island. We're talking about what's on the horizon for Hawaii County in 2018 with a guy who knows, Will Ralston, energy commissioner over there. And we've been doing a sort of peripheral look of everything going on in the big island. We have a map. This is, this is going to be referred to as the famous slide 16. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to take a look at this now. And it's been what we've been talking about. Ready? Poof. Watch. There it is. Poof. Poof. There it there. is. There. <laughs> it's going to come down a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, ah, let me zoom very back good. on it. Oh, yeah, okay. nice All right. slide. So we're showing 200 megawatts electric system, geothermal 38, south wind farm, we talked about that, 20 megawatts, north wind farm at Kohala, Javi, 11 uh, megawatts, uh, Lava Milo, where is that, in Hamakua? That's just up from Puaco. It's uh, right in the middle of the saddle. Uh, mm. Okay. Okay. Right in between two big mountains. Okay, that'd be a good, it'd be a slot where the wind would come out, you know, toward the ocean, I guess. Or, Wait, so we, when uh, we're looking at that three. map that we go from north to south, how, yeah. where, is our, where are these projects, Will? Um, the okay. geothermal, so, yeah. So on the slide, uh -huh. obviously the geothermal is located in Puna, which mm -hmm. is all the way to south. the right, uh, you know, in the, in the most eastern yeah. part of the island. Uh, and then if you go uh, over west, you'll see South Point at the southernmost tip of the mm, United okay. States. And then going uh, north from the South Point wind farm, the 20 megawatt, you'll get lots of solar plays, mostly mm, residential, mm -hmm. some commercial, uh, Costco, everyone visits there, they have their own. 
first commercially financed uh, PV system in the United States was the Monolani, I have to say that. Mm -hmm. um, and then an OTEC project, couple OTEC projects, hopefully coming to Nelha, you know, where they cut the teeth on OTEC offshore. Um, going north, get to the Javi wind site, but I, I did miss in between the saddle our Lalamilu uh, wind project that was done with the water department mm. and is the most sophisticated wind farm system in the United States. Um, as you go over to Hilo, you get run of the river. Um, if you can see on the map, there's lots of streams. You get run of the river hydro, especially when it rains like it has been the last two days. So lots, we're probably getting lots of hydro right now. Mm -hmm. Sharon um, and I were there. Yeah, we, we visited that. that. It's mm -hmm. really an interesting plant. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Yep. And so you have photovoltaic okay. of 80 megawatts. That's mostly on the Kona side or what? Uh, a lot on the Kona side, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. the resorts and the resort uh, residences really love it. You know, it was a good tax break for a lot of people. The commercial buildings like Target, um, the Kona Commons, Costco, um, all have it on top. You know, most of those plays are just to cut a big chunk of their energy out and they don't export to the grid. It's just, you know, they have maybe a megawatt load and they're taking out 600 kilowatts of refrigeration from Costco, you know, because mm -hmm. it's running all the time. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. just smart photovoltaic plays in, in my opinion. Uh, very controllable in my opinion. Uh, I think that would be a little, you know, it's now at 80 megawatts, which makes it the largest aggregated dispatchable generator on the system when the sun shines. So it eclipses Keaholi Point, which is a 80 megawatt machine, and also Hamakua Energy Partners, which I believe is a 60 megawatt combined mm -hmm. cycle machine on the uh, east side, north northeast side. Yeah, let's dwell for a minute on Nelha. We were there uh, only about a month ago. And uh, we saw Greg uh, Barber <clears throat> and his staff there. We went around and saw their stuff. They, they have a very, um, what do you call it, uh, nutritious uh, program for entrepreneurs of all kinds. Uh, you know, business plan competition, that sort of thing. And they're trying to do energy. After all, that's their middle name, the Natural Energy mm -hmm. Laboratory. Uh, you mentioned OTEC, and I remember uh, OTEC had a ship out there with a red hull, 1979, uh, trying to do, do OTEC. But, you know, since then, we still actually don't have OTEC. And I wonder, you know, you mentioned it's coming soon, but what's the status? Are we going to see that as part of this diversified portfolio in Big Island? You will. Um, one, a 100 kilowatt OTEC does exist at Nelha currently by Mackay Ocean Engineering. Mm. And uh, an RFP is on the streets, I believe, uh, for two OTEC plays, one near the one megawatt range. Maybe net power would be 600 kilowatt and, and maybe a smaller one at uh, 300 kilowatts. So, Greg... And I'm on the Nelha board. Uh, Greg Barber, the executive director, is pushing to have more OTEC at the Natural Energy Lab, as he should. Mm -hmm. There's a there's an investment of $100 million in pipes, and that cold water that's that's energy. You know, having that cold water that's that's available energy. So mm -hmm. uh, it just makes sense to use it. And we're going to try mm -hmm. to find the economic um, break-even point on that, but we believe it's a good R&D play, uh, and we believe that a lot of OTEC technologies, like air conditioning and other things, like harvesting metals from the ocean and things like that, will mm -hmm. spawn from that, just like, uh, just like super colliders taught us a lot about lasers and things like that, quarks and Higgs boson particles and things like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, this this takes us, you know, when you talk about economics, talk about uh, various diversified sources, it takes us to the question of how much you guys are paying for a kilowatt hour. Uh, where do you stand on that? What's your average cost to, to the consumer? And how do you rate against the other islands? I think we're second after Molokai. We're either second or third. Molokai may be the highest, and then Lanai's up there, and then we come in right after that. What is that, 30 cents? Is that? 
Yeah, I think we're a little north of 30, and obviously it depends on the oil price. So it depends on the energy cost that's pushed out from oil. A lot of these contracts with renewable energy, independent power producers are tied to avoided costs. So as the oil barrel goes up, then uh, the renewable IPPs, which 50% of the generation is done by them, they also get paid more. So we are still tied to oil. Uh, some of those contracts will um, run out soon, 2020 for the Javi wind farm, and I think 2025 for the South wind farm that's tied to oil. And I believe the hydro, uh, I don't know when the hydro one runs out, but but those are paid out as as you know as it is tied to oil called avoided cost contracts. You know the whole who knew a thing is uh, kind of a an interesting departure, and it suggests in fact it was an article recently I forget where I saw this last couple of days about agriculture being the new source of energy, an important new source of energy in Hawaii, um, and so we have you know the biomass we had a long history in biomass, um, and this is promising for the future. Um, so where, where does it fit in the future? Where does it fit in the pricing and the cost to the consumer when you add biomass like Ho'onua? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Um, that is the debate currently is, um, is the biomass uh, power plant going to be uh, cost effective for the ratepayer? So the answer is it's going to increase rates. Uh, so I believe it's like $5 a month for the average family. Mm -hmm. So is it a good agriculture place? So, you know, now you got to look at it from a helicopter view. Does it do more for the island than it takes, you know, in disposable income? So it, it may make sense from a total ag, you know, we have jobs in agriculture. We're using the forests that are not usable for anything else, the eucalyptus stands that were planted in lieu of sugarcane. And to your point, yes, we were burning a lot of bagasse um, in the early days. You know, we basically had microgrids around the island, sugar plantations, mm -hmm. that were burning mm -hmm. bagasse, the, the sugarcane um, biomass for fuel, for energy, sorry. Um, so, yeah, it's it's... You know, you could say it's a generational thing. This is the new and improved biomass <laughs> play. Um, Back to the plantation. And then, and then, you know, and then you also have homeowners that live by the plant that say, wow, that, that mm -hmm. seems a little bit odd that you're burning wood. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, the debate is on. Yeah. So talking about fuels, I mean, how are how are you doing on EVs? And uh, I think um, there's talking about pilots with the hydrogen with the national parks with uh, HNEI doing some projects over there. How's that going? What's the status there? Right. This has been you know this has been a sojourn in hydrogen. Uh, so it's been a number of years, several years. Uh, in working to get the hydrogen buses and the hydrogen fueling station here. Mm -hmm. So the hydrogen fueling station is being built at Nelha, as you know, and I think it will be complete. It may already be complete now, mm -hmm. but we're looking at 2018 to get one county bus and Volcanoes National Park to get two hydrogen buses. Mm -hmm. So, so three hydrogen buses total on island, and then I've been – uh, talking to my directors about getting a hydrogen vehicle for our fleet just because the name of our department is research and development, and that's what we do. Um, we did start with the first generation of Chevrolet Bolt, which are the plug-in hybrid that has the internal combustion engine, the battery pack, and the regenerative brakes, and that's proven, you know, after several years at 70 to 80,000 miles on the odometer of those vehicles, it's proven to be the right choice. We bought it, mm. you know, at about 45,000, which most, most people thought that's high for a car, but I knew that $90,000 of technology was in there. Mm -hmm. And again, we are research and development. So we, you know, we, if we make a deter decision that this is a technology that fits, and, you know, we obviously want to be right, you know, most of the time and not make, make mistakes. So in that, it took us two years to pay that electric vehicle off because we had it wrapped into the PV 
system. So the PV system we, we got from a third party with a power purchase agreement, that's 20 cent electricity. So it's equivalent to about $2 a gallon gas for the electric mm -hmm. vehicle. So it worked out and paid for itself in two years. So where Big Island is so big, you know, how do you, where are these charging stations? Does everybody have range anxiety every day when they go from here to there? Sharon knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah. She not only has yeah. range anxiety, she has, she has experienced what range anxiety I is know. all about. <laughs> and you can't find something and you've got like, you know, seven miles left in your car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have Skype anxiety. So, um, so basically, um, we made the decision when chargers came out and Better Place was the, mm, the mm -hmm. leading entity that brought them out. But we made a decision, okay, you know, county is not going to invest in public chargers because we don't know what the right technology is yet. So we wanted to wait mm. and see. And we knew that Maui was getting a 30 to $45 million grant with, um, I believe it was the Japanese government and Hitachi. Hitachi, Hitachi. Yes, it was Hitachi, Hitachi yeah. 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 So we wanted to watch and see which chargers um, were the, you know, the robust ones that still hung around. So Better Place failed, as you know, and then the next tranche was a little iffy. And then we watched Maui do well, um, but we thought that, okay, those are the Chatamo, those are Japanese specific. Um, we wanted a more general use charger. And then we didn't know if county should lead in, in putting up chargers or some entity you know, whether it was a car company like Nissan or, or Chevrolet wanted to lead that. Um, and we also didn't want to put up chargers that were not functioning, which a lot of them didn't mm. for years. Mm. And people would go and try to get a charge and it didn't work. Oh, and there's a huge liability with people obviously <laughs> could get electrocuted. So um, mm. long story short, we waited and, and now we're at the point where we're ready to put in a lot of chargers. We've put them in on the Hilo side at our county building, two county buildings. We've put them on this facility, six chargers. Mm. We have a fleet of five, six, you know, and some personal people have electric vehicles. But it's been enough for our needs, but the public needs more. And some fast chargers were just put in by Hawaii Electric Light. And, and so they're taking the charge, so to speak, with electric chargers. And that, that to me and, and us seems natural because it is revenue, right? It's, it's a good sure. revenue stream for the utility. Sure, sure. And, and so it makes sense. So what's, the, what's, the, the lead. what's the thing, uh, looking to 2018, the name of our show? <laughs> we only have a minute left here. <laughs> Um, what, what's what's the, the thing yeah, what's that, on the horizon for that, Big Island? That, yeah, so that's, that's to, on the horizon for you. What do you get excited about for 2018? The one thing that to, comes to mind. If you go to the next slide, slide 17, um, it kind of shows you where we've been and where we're going. Oh, yeah, poof, good. watch this. Poof, 517. There, you go. Ah, there it is. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so you see where we come so from, excited. just starting with our green government program. Um, and then, you know, start stepping lightly into LED lamps. Now we've done a total retrofit of all the island's lamps, first county to do it, um, first island to do it. And then we're, we've been given an asteroid. An asteroid was named after our Department of Public Works traffic chief. Because he, <laughs> he darkened the night skies. I hope you had uh, a party about that. <laughs> very happy about that. We've also done, as you know, Lalamilu, our, that sophisticated wind farm. We won a national climate change award at the last mayor's conference. Um, so then we, you know, we're stepping into an EV charger network for our county facilities. Uh, we're looking at microgrids for certain critical facilities like our civil defense area. And then mm -hmm. we're heavy in the PUC dockets, as you know. We, we go in those dockets knowing it's going to be a lot of work. We sometimes hire consultants that are experts. And, and we play very, we play, you know, we play hard in those dockets because we know they're important. Policies first, um, the way we approach everything. Uh, we, you know, it's actually slide two if you want to look at that. 
that's our approach is energy policy first, then energy efficiency second, on-site renewables, transportation projects, utility partnerships. We can't say enough good things about a Hawaii electric light, especially in civil defense situations. They're amazing. Um, energy research and development, like we support the heck out of Natural Energy Lab when we can. Mm -hmm. And then education, economic development, all the way through those steps. And that, that's kind of our mantra, um, but where we're going, to answer your question, I have to bring you back to slide 17, the strategic initiatives launched, uh, U.S. and world leaders in renewable energy, 50% trajectory to 100%, and we think we'll be there first before any island uh, in Hawaii, so we're proud of that. We've done our homework. We started before the Clean Energy Initiative. We didn't need anyone to tell us. Um, how to do that. We just did it. Uh, and then um, we want to do storage, like you mentioned, but it may be hydrogen, it may be pump storage, and it may be batteries. We don't know yet. And then, um, you know, we're going to get the hydrogen buses. I think that's going to be really cool for mm -hmm. people to ride around mm -hmm. and, and experiment with that technology. And if it's your favorite island, then it maybe it gets more favorite when you're <laughs> you know, experiencing these, right. these we'll different cool things like OTEC and hydrogen bus. Well, if you'll have us, we'd like to come over and make a movie of, about all of these things. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll come over and with a camera and, uh, and just sort of do it. That would be great. Yeah, because yeah, huh? Sharon and I did that did five that. years ago. We had yeah. a wonderful time, yeah. Okay, well, we're out of time, you guys. Let me say, Will, you're really easy to talk to, and you're a, you're a really good interview. Certainly appreciate all the information, have a better idea about what's going on in the Big Island, why it's so important. Good Sharon, things. why don't you close? Okay, the good things about Hawaii is Hawaii Island. <laughs> and doing all that you're doing, Will, from PV and, and uh, hydro and geothermal and, and looking at it in a really planned way. So our energy um, briefing this year is long-range planning, and you're doing exactly what we hope all the other counties and the state does is strategically plan forward. So thank you very much. And, we want to keep in touch with um, your new developments in 2018. Thank, Thank you, you, Will. Will Ralston, Energy Commissioner of Big Thank Island. You. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Yes, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. Malikalikimaka. Malikalikimaka. <laughs> we'll see you uh, in, at the briefing on the January 10th. Come by. I'll be, I'll be there. I already promised. Okay, great. Aloha. Aloha. Right. Thank Bye -bye. you, Will.